Rick Hazelton grew up on May Street in Glens Falls, New York. In October of 1986, the 23-year-old aspiring musician decided to move to New York City. Many of his family relationships were strained, and most of his close childhood friends had either moved away or started families of their own. They were still aware of and excited about his plans, and looked forward to hearing about his life in the city. However, Rick never called or wrote anyone back in Glens Falls after he left town. His friends were concerned, but could not track him down. After a few years, their efforts to find him intensified, but they could not find any records of Rick after he left Glens Falls. Several years after Rick disappeared, his family had him declared legally dead. Brian Pynchon had been Rick's best friend. The two had been inseparable, spending every day together, and Brian considered Rick his brother, rather than simply a friend. Brian went on to become a police officer in Fort Edward, New York, and retired after 25 years of service. Over the years, he would lie awake at night, thinking about Rick, haunted by the thought of never knowing what had happened to his childhood friend. He spent years working on the case in his spare time. He decided to dedicate the extra time his retirement freed up to further working on his investigation and learning what had become of Rick Hazelton. Brian looked up records and scoured databases of unidentified remains. He eventually got in contact with a detective in Nashville, Tennessee, when he found a sketch of a man he thought could have been Rick. It would be this relationship that would finally get Brian answers about what happened to Rick after he left Glens Falls. Rick did not die as his friends, family, and the courts believed. After trying to make it as a street performer in New York City, Rick had spent several months in Miami. While he was there, he saw an ad in a newspaper for cheap airfare and spent $80 on a ticket to Denver. From there, he hitchhiked to Western Colorado, where he met the woman who would eventually become his wife. The couple had two children. In 2001, Rick and his family moved to Oregon to be closer to his wife's family. Rick never contacted anyone back in his hometown because he did not believe anyone would want him to. I didn't think anybody really cared, so I just made my own life and did it, he would eventually tell reporters. He did not know how wrong he was or how many of his friends had looked for him over the years. He did not understand that his abrupt disappearance from his loved one's lives would result in an investigation that would ultimately end in him being declared legally dead or the years of heartache it caused the people who loved him. That finally changed in August of 2019, when a missing persons case was opened in Nashville. Based on Brian's theory that Rick may have died there, Rick received a letter in the mail informing him that he was being investigated as a missing person. He at first thought the letter was a mistake, but then learned that there were still people back in Glens Falls who cared about him. Rick and Brian were able to exchange letters and then speak on the phone. Rick was able to save up enough money to travel back to New York State in November of 2019. He planned to spend several weeks with the various friends and family members he had not spoken with in 33 years, and then celebrate Thanksgiving with them. On November 17th, he and a large group of his childhood friends reunited at the playground where they all used to play together for a game of kickball. Brian Pynchon is very happy to have finally found his old friend, and encourages others who are looking for a missing loved one to keep fighting for answers. If you love somebody, don't ever give up on them, he said after his reunion with Rick. If you don't have an answer, keep going until you can find out what actually happened. Twenty-one-year-old Riley Zickel, originally from California, was living in Portland, Oregon, and attending Lewis and Clark College where he was majoring in chemistry and minoring in music. He loved the outdoors and was an experienced hiker. On Wednesday, July 27, 2016, Riley told his family that he was planning to spend the day exploring the Mount Jefferson Wilderness area southeast of Portland. He was going to camp there that night and then drive up to the Seattle area on the 28th to meet up with friends so that they could go on another hike. The last known sighting of Riley was on the 27th, when he stopped to talk with another hiker on his way into the wilderness. Marion County Sheriff's deputies found Riley's silver Mazda parked near a trailhead for the Pacific Crest Trail 
that went into the wilderness area on July 30th, the same day Riley's family reported him missing. They had become concerned when Riley had not shown up for plans he had made that day. The sheriff's office attempted to ping Riley's cell phone, but were unsuccessful, and believed that Riley had turned it off. It does appear that Riley had his cell phone with him when he traveled to the area, because the friends he had planned to meet near Seattle canceled their plans sometime after Riley talked to his family, and he told a friend that he would be extending his stay near Mount Jefferson. Given the unreliability of cell service in remote areas, it makes sense that Riley may have turned off his phone during his hike. Riley had four days worth of food, a water filtration device, and camping equipment with him when he went into the wilderness area, so there was still hope that he was alive on July 31st, when the formal search for him began. The search team initially consisted of 45 people, but more than 340 people would ultimately assist in the effort. Sheriff's deputies from four additional counties, the Army National Guard, the U.S. Forest Service, and the Civil Air Patrol, all also contributed to the search, which covered more than 350 square miles. On August 1st, the Sheriff's Office received a potential clue. A hiker came forward with a photograph they had taken on July 29th. The photograph showed a man standing outside a tent at Sprague Lake. Riley's family believed it could have been him, and the tent was similar to the one Riley was believed to have taken with him. Unfortunately, two days later, a man came forward, identifying himself as the individual in the picture, leaving investigators without what they had thought was a promising lead. The official search went on for more than a week, far longer than typical search efforts, because Riley had the equipment and knowledge to survive outdoors. Even after the official search ended, Authorities still followed up on leads from unofficial sources. A private helicopter pilot helping the Zickel family was able to provide the sheriff's office with a new location to search in a crevice in the Jefferson Glacier based on his own flights looking for Riley. The location was searched, but nothing was found. While Riley had been equipped to survive for several days when he went into the wilderness, he could not have survived there indefinitely, and his family accepted the fact that he most likely passed away, somewhere too remote for them to find him. On October 23, 2016, Riley's family held a memorial service for him in Petaluma, California. In 2017, the Riley Zickel Endowed Music Scholarship was established to help music students finance their education at Lewis and Clark. In August of 2019, a group of climbers contacted the Marion County Sheriff's Office informing them that they had seen human remains in a glacial area above Jefferson Park on Mount Jefferson. Based on the personal effects that were with the remains, they believed that they belonged to Riley Zickel. The area where Riley was found had been searched back in 2016. Riley's clothing and equipment blended in with the surroundings. However, the main reason the initial search did not help locate him was because of how dangerous the area was. Terrain in that area was very steep, and many of the rocks were loose, which made it prone to rock slides, so it was an exceptionally difficult area to safely search. The nature of the location also complicated the recovery of Riley's remains. However, on September 3, 2019, Marion County's Search and Rescue Squad, Corvallis Mountain Rescue, the Civil Air Patrol, and the U.S. Forest Service all participated in a joint recovery effort. Riley's father, Robin, was waiting at the trailhead when the team brought his son down from the mountain, three years after he went missing. Riley's remains were taken to the medical examiner's office. On October 15th, the medical examiner positively identified the remains as Riley Zickel and released them to Riley's family. While Riley's loved ones had prepared themselves for the reality of Riley's death, locating his remains was still of the utmost importance to them because it both helped them honor Riley and helped them cope. I believe that when you suffer a loss, you learn to live with it. You never get over it, but you learn to live with it, Robin Zickel told the Press Democrat after his son was found. I was not able to learn to live with not knowing what happened. Hugh Turner was from Alberta, Canada, but he and his wife of more than 50 years 
Joyce, spent the winter months at a home they owned in Mesa, Arizona. Even at 85 years of age, Hugh remained very active, working out three days a week, playing golf regularly, and taking daily walks around his neighborhood in the Red Mountain Ranch neighborhood in East Mesa. He left for one of these walks around noon on Christmas Eve of 2010. He never came home. A massive search was conducted to try to find Hugh. Hundreds of volunteers came out to assist members of law enforcement and area search and rescue groups in the effort to locate him. No sign of Hugh or any clues to his whereabouts were found during these searches. Hugh was mentally still very sharp, but his behavior on the morning of his disappearance may have indicated that he was beginning to have memory problems. That morning, he had attended a Christmas party and reportedly went up to a woman and asked her where he was. This raised concerns that Hugh may have been experiencing early signs of dementia at the time of his disappearance. Hugh's wife and four children struggled to cope with the void his disappearance left in their lives and the unease they felt at not knowing what happened to him. Joyce Turner was very lonely without her husband, but continued to return to their home in Mesa every winter. On January 5th, 2019, a hiker was near Red Mountain on the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community when they came across a set of human remains. They notified the authorities, who believed that the remains were Hugh Turner, based on the personal effects found with them. This suspicion was confirmed on January 10th, when the Maricopa County Medical Examiner's Office positively identified the remains as Hugh, based on his dental records. The location where Hugh was found was approximately four miles north of his home. While Hugh's family told authorities that he was physically capable of walking great distances, this area had not been covered in the initial 2010 search. To reach it, Hugh would have had to cross a canal and make his way up very steep terrain. The report from the medical examiner's office did not list a cause of death, but police do not suspect foul play in the case. While Hugh's death is obviously difficult for his family, they are also grateful to finally have answers. I don't think any of us had thought we were ever going to know what happened to our father, said Hugh's daughter, Janice McCaffrey, after his remains were discovered. And I've kind of figured that as sad as it is, we just won the cold case missing persons lottery, and someone found him. And that, in itself, is a miracle.